if you want to overcome depression, I'm going to be your girl. I overcame depression, and in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how I did it. And we are live. Hello, welcome back to Rose Above Moon Motivation, where you will find um, positive affirmations, self-help tips and tricks, and vulnerable stories. Shed bright, yours truly. Hello, my name is Michaela Rosabeth, and I am going to be your host for today's episode 17 of season one, How to Overcome Depression from Someone Who Has. My name, again, is Michaela Rosabeth, and my mission is to help people help themselves by saying how I helped myself. And in today's episode, we're going to be discussing ways to overcome depression from my perspective, science perspective, and a whole bunch of metaphysical and personal perspectives. So let's jump right into it to season one, episode 17. Okay, (laughs) so depression is a deep feeling of losing interest, sadness, and despair. But the best part is that depression is only temporary when you make it. The key points of this episode today are going to be three points, okay? It's going to be point one, understand that depression comes up differently for everyone and knowing how it works for you. Point two, through learning the psychology of depression, you can actually alter the way that it affects you in your life. And point three, You can integrate different depression treatments into your life that work best for you. It's not a one-way-fits-all type of thing. Let's jump into it. Number one, depression shows up differently in everyone. So when I first began my self-help journey, I was diagnosed from my therapist and my doctor with major depressive disorder. And my symptoms of major depressive disorder included sadness, diminished life interest. It also included immense feelings of guilt and of worthlessness and a whole bunch more like really just sad emotions. And it got to the point that I actually became impaired from going into social and occupational situations. But some of my friends and some of my um, colleagues and families, their symptoms are completely different. Some of them include psychoagitation, which is just really, really angry. Some of them also include suicidal thoughts. Some of them include numbness and all feelings. I don't feel anything, right? So it's important to understand that while one person may experience depression in one way, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will experience depression in the same way. And that's why it's really important for point two, right? Point two is to understand the psychology behind depression. It's called depression psychology. And this is super interesting to me because in the 1960s, they came up with this theory called the serotonin theory of depression. And in the 1990s, it became widely spread as the number one reason for depression was serotonin malfunctions and chemical imbalances in your brain. However, This is still being taught. (laughs) The pharmaceutical companies in the 1990s blew this up and blew this into fruition because at that same time is when they started releasing their antidepressants. It's the exact same time they started releasing their serotonin receptor depressants. So it would make sense for them to not only say, hey, sure, these scientists backed it up in the 1960s, even though there's no comprehensive review of this theory, why don't we just go ahead and partner with some specific people and actually get to the point where we're feeding antidepressants to people? So that's what they did. And then a lot of these scientists and a lot of these journals decided to actually second guess this because there had been no comprehensive review of this research on serotonin versus depression that would enable a conclusion. So scientists began doing more studies on this to figure out if depression actually is a chemical imbalance 
And in the Journal of Neuroscience, they released a study where they looked at the hippocampus of your brains. They released a study where they looked at the hippocampus concerning depression. Why did they look at the hippocampus in your brain? It's because from an earlier study, they already knew that stress is a major depression cause. It's a major depressive symptom. And what stress does is it actually suppresses new neuropathways from forming in your hippocampus. Simply put, stress halts the brain's ability to contain memory, learning, and regulate emotions. So when you feel stress inside your brain, what's happening is when you're depressed and stressed, you can't actually completely control your memory, learning, and regulate emotions. That's why sometimes when you are really depressed, it feels like this is it. This is the end. I can't get through this. Um, they also found in the Journal of Neuroscience that 9 to 13% of women that they did a study of with depression actually had a smaller hippocampus anyways. So it was harder for these women to regulate their emotions in general. So when they became depressed, it became extra hard on them. And I pointed this out in multiple videos before, but it's incredibly important to look up multiple studies so you don't have just a simple bias. And so I looked up the Harvard Medical School. They released a study that showed that in the amygdala, the amygdala is the portion of the brain that is the one that's in the middle back. In the amygdala, that is going to be connected to your anger, pleasure. It's going to be related to fear, arousal. And what the Harvard School of Medicine found was actually when people are depressed, the amygdala in their brain has a higher activity rate. Hence, when you're depressed, your emotions are so strong because the emotion portions of your brain are literally being affected. Other studies showed that depression can come from more stuff than just your brain, right? It can come from chronic pain, drugs, alcohol use, it can come from past trauma, and it can come from horrible life events happening to you. What does all this information mean? It means that depression can happen to anyone, anywhere, at any time. It's the brain's mechanism to literally feel its feelings. And when the brain is depressed and you're depressed, it's literally its mechanism to become more into your feelings and to feel harder it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't care who you are if depression has a chance to come up it's going to so when depression impacts you what practices should you begin integrating well one of the main practices that i began integrating was moon magic botanicals it's going to be our sponsor for today's episode this is their natural skin moisturizer all of these ingredients are have no added chemicals in it, no added colors. They are all organic. You can see I use this one quite a bit because I love it. They are all or nat or natural, organic and natural. They this one is the natural skin moisturizer and it just melts like butter. I use this for my dry spots. I have clients that use it on their feet. ASMR. <laughs> I also, as you can see, I'll use it on my tattoos. Um, I will use it on my dry spots. I absolutely love this stuff. And so make sure you check it out at rosabethmoon.com for to grab your Moon Magic Botanicals today. All right, this leads to the point number three, right? When depression impacts you, what practices should you start to integrate? And I, of course, found some that really helped me out. And it's acupuncture therapy, journaling, positive affirmations, TRE exercises, EFT tapping, earthing, goal setting, herbal medicine, right? I created a, an herbal organic skincare line, and shadow work. Other types, though, that might work for you that just didn't work for me and that's okay is group therapy, group meetups, cardio, mobility exercises, gratitude training, breath work, meditations, mantras, leaving the situation absolutely completely just dip. And of course, zero balancing. And there's a few more. I do have an article in the description that is the written version of this video. If you want to see more 
and see the references that I use, including all of the studies, they are in the description below. But what do you think? Do you think that there are any of these practices you gravitate to? Do you think that now that you know what's happening in your brain, whenever you feel sad, that it'll actually help you feel better? Or do you feel like you've now lost all hope because it's just how the brain reacts? It makes you feel any better. The brain is designed not only to feel its feelings, but to actually get better. It's the brain's mechanism, right? The, it's to feel, feel its feelings. Once you begin integrating these practices into your life, the brain will begin to adapt and grow. That's its goal. So don't give up. Remember, you have the power of choice, right? You can choose to implement practices into your depression treatments that do and will genuinely help you feel better. Please subscribe. Please check out my videos for more self-help and follow me on socials. The link is down below. I did connect the article to this in the description and make sure to check out Moon Magic Botanicals at rosebethmoon.com. Remember, you have the power of choice. You can choose to integrate and overcome your depression just like I did by doing these things. I'll see you in the episode. I'll see you in the next episode. I'm grateful to have seen you today. Bye guys.